Philippians chapter 3. I just want to read a passage of the Bible to you and tell you a story and then I'll preach. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. We need to have the right things in our heart. Verse 12 of Philippians chapter 3 in the KJV says, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Amen. The Living Bible says, I don't mean to say I am perfect. How many of you can witness to that? How many of you can say you are not perfect? Okay. I haven't learned all I should even yet. But I keep walking towards that day when I will finally be all that Christ saved me for and wants me to be. How many of you be a witness with that? Verse 13. No, dear brothers. I am still not all I should be, but I am bringing all my energies to bear on this one thing. And you see, I believe that many times in life we must narrow things down to one thing. What I must focus my energy on and succeed through that one thing. Many people bring, they divide their energies on so many things. Look at what he said again. He said, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I must learn to do that every time. Praise God. I was um, led to share a story with you before I preach today. And that is the story of a man called David Ring. What did I say? David Ring. Now, I had him years ago sing when he was 39 years old. And then um, this man was born with cerebral palsy. He was told that he won't live beyond 30. And now he is 51 years old. 21 years more than the doctors gave him. He was told that he would never walk, but he's walking today. He was told that he would never ride a bicycle without falling and he rides a bicycle without falling. He was told that he would never drive, and he's driving today. He was told he would never marry, and he's married to a beautiful and normal woman. He was told he would never be a daddy, and he's a daddy four times. All his children are normal. And he has one of the best sense of humor you can ever find. Today he has preached in more than 5,000 churches, has a music ministry, and has been in evangelism for 31 years. And presently, he conducts seminars lasting four hours to tell people that no matter what, God can make a way for you. That you don't have to lose hope. And he says you can be a champion without scoring a touchdown. And you see, that story challenged my heart. Because when I look at people, I don't, I'm not moved by their physical side. I want to see the kind of spirit inside men. Because if your spirit is stronger than your environment, you are going to win. But if your environment is stronger than your spirit, no matter how good 
your intentions are you are not going to make it and this morning i want you to pray that god is going to make your inside stronger than your outside can you lift your hands and pray that that god almighty is going to make your inside stronger than your outside cerebral palsy can't speak well but it seems anointed Many people will have given up a long, long time ago. Maybe you're here this morning that you feel like giving up. I want you to be encouraged. You are not yet there. Things in your life may not be as you want it. That's no reason why you say you want to give up. Just keep on moving on with God. Alright? Just keep on. Moving on with God. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. I pray for everyone here today that you put strength in their soul. Strength for the journey. Power to outlast their challenges. In the name of Jesus. That living our lives on the earth we will bring glory to you. You look at everyone and be glad to say they are overcomers. Yeah. We thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. You may be seated in Jesus' precious name. Hallelujah. When Jesus was um, ministering, the Lord, one day he spoke to the disciples and said, Simon Peter, Satan has desired Ask for permission to sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. Amen? And you know that those are some of the things that you don't enjoy hearing from God. Amen? I was um, just in my prayer room and I was meditating and looking out through the window and the Lord said, the devil does not like your church. What your church is doing makes him mad. Amen? We had a man come here. came all the way from Lagos. He couldn't see. And this is about the sixth person that can't see that this ministry is reaching. And he traveled down. He was brought by his son. I was not in the office, so they called me. He said, I just believe that if you are going to pray, God is going to do something with my eyes. I believe I can see again. Amen? So I said he should lay his hands on his eyes, and I prayed with him. I said, now begin to exercise your faith. He said, yes, the man has faith, strong. And the devil has put him in that prison, but God is breaking that prison open. Amen? And then in the evening, somebody called me from Lagos and said, um, sir, I have a problem. And um, he has glaucoma of the eyes. And the doctor said there's nothing they can do. Is get into realms that um, there's nothing they can do. But he listens to us on the radio. And I prayed with him. Praise God. Amen. Okay, so turn your Bibles to Revelation chapter 2, where I've been dealing with apostolic foundations. And we are looking at sound doctrine. And we are dealing with the book of Revelation. Remember, it's the only book in the Bible that God promises you a blessing for studying. Just reading it, you get blessed. So when you are studying it, you get more blessings. Praise God. And we are now in verse 12. We are looking at the church in Pegamos. Last Sunday, we looked at the church in Smyrna. Am I correct? Huh? Okay. That is the persecuted church. And one of the things that we said is um, that when you are under persecution... God has a plan for you. Don't be discouraged. Don't be down. And there, there is, there's something that came out of that teaching in the morning that I was sharing with the second service people on the kingdom. And I want you all to note it and write it down. When a church is under persecution, there is a restriction placed by the enemy on the ability of that church to fulfill the great commission even within their own immediate vicinity. 
and it becomes the responsibility and the assignment of the prosperous free church to evangelize the immediate vicinity of the persecuted church and also to strengthen the persecuted church. And many times you hear some statements that um, may confuse you and give you a wrong approach to issues of life particularly when it comes to the subject of prosperity. Definitely, God is going to prosper his people differently. Amen? The Bible promises all of us to have a full supply. A full supply means different things to different people. The church that is not under persecution that is blessed must recognize the responsibility and assignment that God has given to them to reach the places that the persecuted church cannot reach. The church that is blessed is not failing because they are not dressing or living like the church that is persecuted. No. You are failing if God has blessed you because you are not reaching farther than the person that is persecuted. Are you following what I'm saying? If you are prosperous and blessed, somebody may be trying to put condemnation on you and say, well, you see, you are wearing good clothes. That person does not have clothes and things like that. Now, you are not failing because you are not wearing rags. Some of you, if you wear rags, it will be stupid of you to wear rags. Are you following what I'm saying? Praise God. You are failing when you are not reaching farther than the person that is restricted by persecution and satanic opposition. Can you get that? So you must understand your assignment and your responsibility as a blessed person. God does not want you to be blessed and it shows only on you. He wants to see the blessing in the outreach of the kingdom of God. Amen? Praise God. So now we are moving to another church. That is dealing with the persecuted church. We are moving to the deceived church. The church at Pegamos. And if we can finish today, if we, have, if we run a little bit, we can get to the church at the Tiatira, the worldly church. Amen? Amen? Now, we have seen different church labels. Amen? Remember that these labels also apply to individual Christians. Can you understand? Just as the church at Pegamos is the deceived church, there are Christians that are deceived Christians. Amen. And we must not um, trivialize deception. If the devil can deceive you, he can defeat you. That is why we are dealing with the subject of sound doctrine. Get your doctrine balanced. Get your doctrine correct and sound. So the devil cannot um, deceive you. Let's read from verse 12, and to the angel of the church in Pegamos, write, This thing said he, which has the sharp sword with two edges. Let's just stop there a little bit. You will notice that this statement is not the one that has the two-edged sword. There is a deliberate emphasis on the two edges of the sword in the hand of God. And it is absolutely important that every Christian understand that God, there are two sides to the things of God. There is the blessing and the cursing. When the Bible says, I said before you blessing and cursing, when I set a commandment in front of you, he's setting blessing and cursing in front of you. So the, the focus of the Lord here is the two sides of the word of God. The sharp sword is the word of God. The Bible says the word of God is as a two-edged sword. Are you following what I'm saying? Now, when the word of God is coming, it has two sides. One is the side of obedience that comes, the side of blessing that comes when you obey it. The other is the side of consequence of disobedience. Just put your finger there a little and go to the book of Hebrews chapter 2. We we'll come back to that. I want, I want you to understand that. Every statement in the Bible, when you read it very well, you will understand some um, deeper truths in it. You know, the Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 5, it said the mature person has trained his senses to discern good and evil. That's one thing that most Christians don't understand that is our responsibility. God wants us to train our senses. Train your ears to stop hearing carnal things only. Train your eyes to see beyond the obvious, these physical eyes. If a mother trains her eyes, when your children come back from school, you look at them, you can see ah, something is not right about this child. How do you know? Just looking at him. And then you ask questions. Listening to people, you can hear something underneath their words. I hope you follow what I'm saying. Because you are training your physical senses to become spiritual. Write it and don't forget it. It is your responsibility to train your physical senses.
to become spiritual. They have not become spirit senses, but they become spiritual. They are tuned to spiritual things. Amen? So when you read that verse, for example, the sharp sword with two edges. That is one of the very few places, if not the only place in the entire Bible, that the Bible describes that sword with two edges. All other places say two-edged sword. Two-edged sword. But it says the sharp sword with two edges. Now look at the two edges here. Verse 1 of Hebrews chapter 2. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them sleep. Sleep out of our grasp. Sleep out of our memory. Sleep out of our understanding. Sleep out of our faith. Amen? For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward. That's one side of it. Every transgression and disobedience to the word of God carries a just recompense of reward. Now most of us want the justice of God to punish our enemies alone. We don't want the justice of God to deal with our own rebelliousness or disobedience. If, the, if somebody oppresses you, the justice of God requires that that person should be punished. And if you oppress somebody, the justice of God requires that you should be punished. Are you following what I'm saying? Praise God. The second side of the word is the just recompense of reward to every compliance and obedience to the word. Many times you see the Bible say, if you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. If they obey and serve me, they will stay, spend their, days, their years in pleasure and their days in prosperity. If they obey and serve it. So there is the side of obedience and then there is the side of disobedience. There are two different experiences waiting on those two sides of the word of God. Can you understand what I'm saying? Many times it's not the devil that is doing things against people. I was just meditating yesterday and I sat in my, in my study and, and, I was, and I began to write. Maybe next Sunday I will do a teaching on that. And I began to see the subject of pain. That there are, there are different kinds of pain. There is actually a positive pain. In fact, a pain on purpose. And I remember that when I had a toothache, that tooth was decaying. I mean, it, was, it had holes and the holes had eaten deep into the gums. And they needed to, it was causing me all kind of problem. And if, by the time I went to take it out, when water enters it, oh, it will, be, it will like, look like everything in my body is turned upside down. And eventually I went to see the dentist. And he said, ah, they looked at it and said, the, the tooth is placed somehow. They can't just op remove it with the things that, the, 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 the instrument that they use normally. They will have to do a minor operation, lift the gum under and drill under the tooth to remove it. And when that brother, when that, the brother that was doing it, the nice brother, he talked to me before starting and said, this is the normal, it's a routine surgical operation. I've done many like that and all that. I know he's trying to cool me down. Praise God. Amen. So I don't panic. But the point that I wanted to get is this. They, they gave me some painkillers to deaden this side of my mouth. Uh, but I still felt pain when it began to drill. Do you understand? When it began to drill, say if it's paining you, signal so that they will know maybe something is wrong or whatever. But then I saw that they had to apply purposeful pain to stop destructive pain. Have you ever noticed that before? If your bone is dislocated, for the bone to be fixed back, the orthopedic surgeon, we have to move the bones that are holding it back. And when they move the bones back, you feel some pain. But when that bone that is out of joint fits in, crack like that, eventually we have permanent peace. Am I correct? But do you know something? My daughter is here. If anything caught her hand like this, say, yes! I say, let them bring spirit. Say, that is okay. There's not, it's not paining me again. That's exactly what she's going to say. Anytime she has spirit, you say, oh, that is okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's not paying me again. But now, have you ever wounded your leg and you apply iodine or spirit? Did you enjoy it and say, oh, praise God, give me that ice cream? Did you do that? No, you didn't do that. But the pain that iodine gave you was to stop the destructive pain of the leg that would decay and may need amputation later. And you see, there are many Christians that 
there are many things in our lives that is causing us pain, that many people are refusing solution of God. Solution of God many times will involve some purposeful pain in order to stop that destructive pain. And if you have this kind of stupid gospel that is a painkiller gospel, you are never going to have a permanent solution. That is why the early church was a powerful church. Today we are a prosperous church but powerless. Because what most people want is just, just get rid of the pain from it. Sometimes the pain has to be applied on purpose. How many of you have taken an injection before? Wave your hand. Was he sweet? The person giving you injection, was he your enemy? No, 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 no. The, the doctor that was removing my tooth was my best friend. But the pain made me feel at one time, this, this guy, what? you understand what I'm saying? But he wasn't the one that brought the destructive pain. It was my carelessness of eating sweet things. Do you know there are many sweet things that we enjoy that is giving, putting holes in our life? Like gossip, like sin, like many wrong things that is against the word of God. And they are drilling holes into different aspects of your life. Some is drilling holes in finances and things like that. And it's causing pain. And if that pain is going to be dealt with, sometimes a pain on purpose must be applied. Show me somebody that sees the person that wants to apply pain on purpose to bring destructive pain to an end and runs away. You see somebody that is, that pain is going to be destroyed. Bible says in Psalm 20, in Proverbs 29, he says a man that is often rebuked and corrected and had his neck will suddenly be destroyed without any remedy. So the power of the word of God lies in that. Are you following what I'm saying? Many Christians, I said to people, I said to pastors some time ago, I said sometimes, you see, there are a lot of big shots that actually are not looking for pastors, they are looking for prayer contractors. Can you stay in church at a lesser role in the will of God than get out of church into a prominent role outside of the will of God? Because faith you see, the kingdom of God is not a matter of chance, it's a matter of choices. Everybody will come to a junction in their life that you are going to have to make a decision based on the evidence of things not seen by other people. People think you're stupid. Hello everyone, are you looking for a place to fellowship online this season? Are you searching for an avenue to feed your faith consistently on a daily basis? Are you looking for answers? Then we've got you covered. God has directed his servant Reverend Olushala Ayodele Areogun to minister the word of life to every believer. Join in using the following links www.lifevoicesinternationalchurch.org slash streaming or www.dciradio.org You can also connect with us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, SoundCloud, YouTube and Vimeo with the handle at Reverend Areogun. Fellowship online with us every Wednesday for our midweek service from 5 o'clock in the evening and on Sundays for our super celebration service from 8 o'clock in the morning on the same platform. For inquiries, you can contact us via these telephone numbers plus 234-806-091-9696 plus 234-810-586 Four five seven nine and plus two three four eight zero three seven two five two one two four SMS only. You can also send an email to lifevoices at atmail .com. Remember, this is not the season to fear, but a time to feed on the undiluted word of truth and return back to the place of personal intimacy with God. The Lord has said you are ease, you are hidden, impregnable, and strengthened. Jesus is Lord. Got an answer, 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 answer from heaven. My answer, my answer, answer from heaven. I've got an answer, 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 answer from heaven. My answer, my answer from heaven. No more toil, no more toil.
Got a knife. 